Hello YouTube and welcome to this brand new dating Q&A. Last Tuesday, I asked you guys to post any questions you might have regarding dating, women, relationships, etc, etc. And I'm going to start answering them today. My goal of this series is first and foremost to have a format that is more relaxed, less scripted, where I can be less guarded as well, and offer advice to young men who are, you know, a little bit confused regarding women the way I used to be. And I know that back in the days, I would have liked to have a big brother figure to answer those tough questions and to not have to actually discover everything by myself. So it's what I want to actually offer to you guys with this. You have to keep in mind that I don't know everything. All of what I'm going to be sharing today is based on my own experience. But because I went through pretty much every single stage of life as a young man, I think that I've lived enough to be able to be of help because I used to be the guy that was completely invisible in the eyes of women. I got rejected dozens of times. I was extremely awkward around them. I had no ability to communicate with them. I couldn't recreate relationships and that lasted for a very long time. And I eventually broke out of my shell and I've now managed to create a winning tradition, meaning that I went from the guy who was invi uh, invisible, rejected, to someone who was solely popular with women and who then understood that there was more to dating and love than just random hookups and moved on to this now stage of my life where I am happily married and I will be happily married until the day I die, God willing. And it's something I want to offer you guys as well. So if your goal in life is just to fuck as many chicks as possible, this video series is not going to be for you. If you want to be someone more balanced, wants to be in tune with his emotions and with his relationship with the opposite sex, then listen up because I think you are going to learn a lot. Anyone who is watching this and who is nice enough to timestamp, I would appreciate it. It saves me a ton of time that I can then spend making more videos for you guys. For this q in particular, I will always be telling your name so as to make sure that you know it's your question I'm answering. If you do not want this and you want to remain anonymous, let me know in the comments you post under the community guideline post, uh, the community post I made uh, under the community tab. Here I have divided the video in two segments. The first one is the democracy segment where I take the questions that have the most upvotes and I don't, whether I want to answer them or not, if they are highly upvoted by the community, I will answer them always. And the second segment and the second section is going to be the tyranny portion where I pick questions myself. I don't care how many upvotes they have. If I like them, I'm going to answer them. You will come to notice that the second portion tends to have the edgiest question, the one that some people would shy away from. I am not a man to shy away from any topic. If you have understood where I come from, I'm both a chauvinist and a feminist. I do believe that there is a strong separation between the sexes a separation that is absolutely essential to maintain if we want love to actually perpetuate. My goal with these videos is to allow you, the men watching me, to create strong bonds and strong relationship and pious with women. And I think that this also benefits women because it's also what they want out of life. So all of the, politi the political correctness aside, we are going to get started and we are going to begin with Blue Chip's question who asks, I'm 19, I've never been in a relationship. I'm short, 5 feet 6, I just started lifting, but women don't see me as attractive. I'm quiet in social situations and not my true self. How do I break out of my shell? How do I become confident and comfortable with other people? I think that I care too much. It's a situation that when you are past your teenagehood as a young man, you will most likely encounter. Unless you have done the identity work throughout your teenage years, which most people don't do. You should have spent these years building an identity, but it's extremely complicated because you are pretty much pulled in a million directions when you are a teenage man. So it's now the time to do that work. I think that it's something that you pointed out yourself. You are not yourself around others. Why is that? Well, I think it's because you are not confident in what other people are going to perceive. You're not sure if they're going to receive what you have to offer. And therefore, you prefer to just be blind because having no identity or personality is a good way to not be rejected. But it's also a good way to never be accepted because there is nothing for other people to accept. So first and foremost, you have to make that work on yourself and discover who you are. 
It takes a long time. It, take, it takes hours by yourself, hours that you're not going to like because they're going to make you feel like you are rejected and ostracized. These hours are necessary. No one can do without them. Once you have done these hours and you know your true self and your identity, it's time to put it to the test and to present it to the world. Might it be rejected? Yes, absolutely. Every rejection you will actually encounter is going to allow you to reshape your identity so that you can be accepted by the group or just say screw it and say to yourself, my personality is the way it is. I'm not going to change it for anyone. This is when you're going to start to reach a stage of acceptance, which leads you to stop caring. Stop caring. That is a very important advice. One that is not as easy as it sounds because you don't want to go too far. Many men go too far and they become assholes. You still want to have some social sense, but the ability to be comfortable with yourself, even if other people don't accept you for who you are, is extremely important because paradoxically, it is what makes you very attractive. People have a very strong sense for desperation. A desperate man is not attractive regardless of his personality. Once you accept yourself and you love yourself, other people are going to start to love you. I'm certain that because of your short stature, your height has also been a problem in your life. Is it a problem because of other people? Yes, of course. I'm not going to be the one to tell you that a short man has no difficulties in life. But the worst part of being short is what it does to you. It has an impact on your personality. I know it. I used to be short. I had a very late growth spurt. And I have friends who are short. And I know the way short men interact with the world. They harbor a deep resentment for their condition. And it is that status, that resentment, that makes it so that their social interactions are poor. I will make a full video about uh, short men eventually because my, uh, my short brothers are suffering, I know, from this injustice of sorts that puts you in this situation where you start resenting your height, something you have no control over, but it's something that you have to start also to work on. You have to accept your height. You're never going to grow taller at this point, you're 19, you're 5 feet 6 for the rest of your life. You started lifting, so you started to understand that there are other aspects of your status as a man that you can improve. That is good. Never let people talk you out of improving yourself. Just because one factor cannot be improved does not mean that the rest cannot be improved. Now, for the fact that women don't see you as attractive, it could be because of your height. It could be. But there will be women that don't care about that. And these are the ones you don't want to scare away with your resentment. So, it's going to be a game of, again, developing your identity, not letting your demons drag you down and make you resentful, and then offer yourself to the world. You say that you're quite in social situation. Try to make a habit of talking to people. I'm the exact same way. I don't like social interactions. I don't like talking to people much. But I force myself. And something that you find out very quickly is that once the conversation gets going, you will find that actually talking to other human beings is quite refreshing. It is something that it actually is actually very good for the soul, very good for your mental health. So put yourself out there. Even if you're rejected, it doesn't matter. Keep doing that. Never let yourself be taken down by the attempts at others to make you feel bad. And more importantly, don't let yourself feel bad. All of what I just discussed is you. It's building the you. I've, I haven't even spoken about relationships yet. And that is because until you do everything I just told you, a relationship is out of the question. Because even in the best case scenario, you're going to end up with a woman that is going to have to fix you because you are not complete yet. You want to really create something of value before you start trying to get a girlfriend. And most of the time, you will find that they will be the one to tell you when you're ready for a relationship because women have a very good eye for men who have their shit together. They also have a very good eye for men who don't have their shit together that they then try to fix. You don't want these women, they tend to be hot messes. Instead, you want to be the almost complete project that is going to be adopted by a woman who sees the potential in you. Keep in mind one thing. You're 19. You're a baby chick. 19 is nothing for a man. Men reach their prime in their 40s, 50s. Financial, financial and in terms of confidence and in terms of social status, 50s is perfectly normal for a man to enter that type of prime. So don't feel like you are pressed by time. You are simply not. You have a ton of time to develop yourself. Next question by I don't know. Thoughts on being in a relationship with someone who has slowly started to let themselves go, causing you to not be physically attracted to them anymore. This is a situation that any man that is going to get married or is going to have a long-term girlfriend is going to encounter at some point or the other. 
women enter relationships with the idea that love shouldn't rely on conditions. It's unconditional. And it's absolutely, of course, nonsense, but it's a lie that women actually like to tell, tell themselves because it's important for them. Uh, there are memes nowadays circulating about women asking their boyfriend, would you still like me if I were a bug? Or would you still like me if I was like a, a puddle on the ground? These questions sound silly, but they really show to you how women function. Your girl wants to make sure you're going to stick by her through thick and thin. In this case, it's more thick than thin. When a woman gets fat, when she's so sure that she's secured you, it's one, an attempt to see if you're going to bounce. Two, also a simple inclination of the human spirit. We get comfortable. When you don't have to challenge yourself anymore and you know that your partner is not going to go anywhere, women just let go. Because it's true that it's very comfortable and pleasing to stuff your face. So now you are stuck between a rock and a hard place. What do you do then? Your partner that you love and used to want to bang is slowly degrading to the point that you don't really want to touch them or even look at them anymore. It's of course horrible to be in this situation for a man. But you also understand that if you go to your woman with that, it is not going to be well received at all. And yet it is what is needed. This is when boundaries in relationship take the center stage. You have a right as a man, just like your woman has, to stipulate that you want the relationship to be this way and not this way, and you want to be the per and you want the person to be this way and not this way. If tomorrow, as a man, you told your girlfriend, "Hey, I want to get a full face tattoo," your girlfriend would immediately veto the decision, even though it is your body. Why? Because you won't be attractive to her anymore if you do that, and more importantly, you're going to sabotage your ability to get a job. She has an absolute right to state that she refuses that you get a face tattoo. It is the exact same for you. You have the right to approach your woman and say, hey, you're putting on the pounds, you're not actually looking after yourself anymore, and I am worried. Try to approach the situation from that standpoint. Don't open with, I don't find you attractive anymore because you know where this is going to go, she's going to start crying, etc. Instead, try to present the situation as a health concern or even as an identity concern. Ask her, hey, are you okay? I've noticed that you started to eat more. It, did something happen? Do you feel bad at your job? Why are you trying to compensate with food? Try to get her to open up. There might be no reason, but by doing that, you give her an out. You give her an out so that she doesn't have to just say, oh, well, I have you now so I can just stuff my face because you're not going anywhere. You have to find a way to get her to find another reason for the, for the fatness she has developed. And once that is done, you open up a path where you can now say, okay, well, I would like you to actually take into account the fact that it is damaging the relationship when you start to treat yourself this way. Again, present it like this. Say that you believe that what she is going through is a form of self-harm and self-damage, that you are afraid she's going to have poor health in the future, which is absolutely correct. She will have poor health if she keeps on putting on the pounds, etc., etc. And by doing this, you're going to also manage to get yourself into the discussion of how do we get you to lose some weight? A ton of women will never make that step themselves. They want you to be in charge. They want you to say, okay, I want you to look like this. I want you to do this. We're going to get you in the gym. We're going to fix your diet. If you have a very confident approach and you are almost tyrannical in your approach, without your ultimatum, we don't have, you don't have to say, if you don't lose weight, I'm, I'm leaving you. You just have to be strict. It is something that I have noticed throughout the years, women like strictness. They respond to it very positively. They like when a man knows what he wants and he knows how he wants it. Don't be afraid to do that. If she has an emotional response, give her some space and re-attack again. She will try to guilt you into, into stopping the interrogation. Don't let it go. What you're fighting for is not yourself. This is not a selfish fight. It's a fight for the relationship. She has to understand. If she does not meet your standards, the relationship will die. Or worse, it will stay alive, but you will be dead inside. You won't find her attractive anymore. And women like, when, women like being desired. At some point, your girl is going to be in a tough place as well because she will be repulsive to you, but she will desperately try to be attractive and it's simply not going to work. So even for her own happiness, you have to lay down extremely strict boundaries. Next question by Timothy Jeremia. You mentioned many times that weakness can drive women away. How does one toe the line of being honest with their partner about what is upsetting, bothering them while not driving them away? 
Good question. So if you remember, I told you in my four-hour-long video about women and romance that I believe that many women share the same preferences in men, but not to the same degree, and that they also have the same types of turn-offs. For example, weakness is a universal turn-off in women. It does not mean that you won't be able to find a girl that finds sensitive men attractive. It's possible. But it's because they don't perceive that sensitivity to be a form of weakness. This is the important thing to keep in mind. Likewise, if you're broke, some women won't care, and some women will perceive that as a form of financial weakness, and they won't like it. Weakness is an umbrella term for your inability to provide her with something that she wants. If you are emotionally weak, for example, you cannot provide her with the emotional stability that she might seek, etc., etc. So this is something to keep in mind as a man. It's the reason why when you enter a relationship, you're not going to reveal your weaknesses right away. We all have weaknesses. I have very deep weaknesses as well. The first year when I dated my now wife, she knew nothing of it. I was a secret. I stayed a closed vault. Why? I was testing her, making sure she could take it. I did not want to scare her away. Too many men, and usually it's, it's to do with your relationship with your parents and the fact that you never got the chance to express your emotions, many men emotion dump onto the lap of the first female they encounter. And of course, the girl is going to run away because you are you're too much. Your baggage is too much and she's not sure she's going to be able to carry that. So she, so she just gives up. This is what you want to prevent. You want a slow trickle down of your weaknesses when you open yourself up to your girl. This is the way to go. So in how to toe the line of being honest, you want to be measured about it. You want to share some stories here and there until you get to a point where you're fully comfortable with your partner and you can trust her with your heart. I also hear many men who say that they are afraid of women because women hurt them in the past. A woman used the secrets of the information they divulged to them to hurt them in arguments, etc. How did that happen? Well, you were completely cavalier with your own secrets and you gave them to someone that immediately turned them into weapons the second she got a chance. It is your fault. You needed to be much more careful. Keep in mind that some of your secrets you will never reveal. I have things that I will never tell my wife because I don't want her to be privy of that type of information. It is absolutely necessary for the two uh, men and women in the relationship to have their secret garden. You are not an open book and you don't need to be an open book. Now, when it comes to communicating what upsets or bothers you in the relationship, keep in mind that this might not be a weakness. It might actually be a good thing. Women like open communication. They like it when you tell them how you feel because it's a language they understand very well. This might be sometimes a thing that is going to even make you closer to your partner. You just have to be able to, again, express these things without going overboard. So for example, she does something that triggers a childhood trauma of yours. Don't trauma dump on her. Just explain to her, hey, this one thing that you do, like the way you put this away or the thing that you told me, I did not like it. This is it. You don't have to divulge the emotions behind the upset, right? You just have to express the upset. And maybe one day you'll be able to go further. Something that I have found with men and women is that in truth, when you get married, when you get to, with someone and you start to build something complex, you fix one another. You soothe one another. It's In my opinion, it's like in my mind, I see two, a young boy and a young girl holding hands and sort of mending their wounds together. Your partner is going to share things in her past that broke her down and you will eventually as well. And you're going to grow stronger together. These wounds are going to close because in a sense, they're going to close as you come closer one to the other. But it's again, a slow process. If you rush to your partner with an open gash in your stomach, you cannot be worried or you cannot be surprised that she runs away. Very good question, by the way. Being emotionally in touch is very important for men. It's a theme you're going to see is quite recurrent in this type of Q&A. Cruel too. Do you think men and women can just be friends without one of them wanting something more? This is a complex question. I cannot say yes or no. It depends on the individuals that enter the relationship. Something that I've found is that if you were friends with a woman before you entered puberty or before you started to be in the mindset of relationships, Chances are this is someone you can keep as a friend for the rest of your life because the established basis of the relationship is one of pure platonic friendship. 
So these tend to be solid. These tend to work. The problem is if you meet a woman as a man when you're already mature enough, you're sexually mature. Now, and don't lie to yourself, you know that it's true, the second you saw her, she entered your mind as a potential sexual partner. And the same, the opposite is also true. You both judged one another the second you saw each other and decided whether or not you would bang one another. Did that happen? No. Are you even conscious you did that? Most likely no. But it's a thing. And this means that the opportunity and the option is now on the table. So as you become close friends, there could be a time where these feelings are going to reveal themselves to you and you're going to surprise yourself jumping on one another and having sex. This is something that is quite common. It can become a problem if you are already committed to someone else. If you are not, it could be a good thing. It is the natural continuation of friendship that has evolved into romance and into love. Many of the strongest couples I know are like this. It starts innocent and at some point something ignites and the relationship just blooms. But in terms of philosophy, it is an important question to ask because many men will tell you that it's impossible and I've started to believe that in truth, past a certain point in life, you will truly, you will truly never become 100% just a friend to a woman and vice versa. Unless there is a big age difference. If you're 20 and you meet a woman who's 55, chances are she can just become a mentor to you. And the opposite is also true. Although I would be much more suspicious of a 50-year-old man who befriends a 20-year-old girl for obvious reasons. At some point, sadly, sex taints everything. It's why innocence, when you are not and you haven't entered puberty yet, is the most innocent and the purest moment of your life. It's the only part of life where your thoughts are not constantly tainted by the, the, the perpetual uh, scent of sexual desires, which tend to permeate every single relationship that exists between men and women. We should be happy that this is the case. If it weren't the case, the species would disappear. Ghastly. How do you come to terms with rejection in a relationship where feelings aren't reciprocated? As someone who forms bonds easily. So this, in French, we call avoir un cœur d'artichaut. It's people who fall extremely quickly, extremely hard, and they do that every single time they get a partner. The issue, of course, is that one, you're going to scare people away, two, you're going to get in your feelings too quickly, and therefore you get hurt much faster. Some people are not like this. I am not like this. I take a very long time to give my heart, and therefore uh, the few times where I got broken up with, I didn't really care because I wasn't invested. You don't have that luxury. It also makes you someone who is having an easy time making bonds with people, so that's a positive. But you have to be very careful with who you actually form bonds, as I'm sure you understood by now. So in terms of rejection for someone like you, it's going to hurt much more because you, you give your heart willingly and therefore when people reject it, it's, it truly is a deep pain. You have to be more cautious with the way you approach relationships, I believe. I understand that it's not your nature, but sometimes going against your nature and trying to, to, to measure it and to have some self-restraint is very important. You will have noticed that in those relationships where the feelings were not reciprocated, it was most likely because your feelings bloomed too quickly. It's not that the opposite person doesn't like you or love you, it's that you did not give them the time to get to that point. You jumped on their lap way too quickly and therefore it's the equivalent of someone who steps on a plant. The plant could have grown to be 15 feet tall, but the issue is that you sabotaged it quickly. So you have to keep in mind that even though your feelings are real and are valid, they might not be valid for the other person and they might even invalidate their future feelings. So don't take it personally. Understand that not everyone goes to your own pace. Try to slow down your pace a bit and see if it actually helps. Also, don't take it the wrong way when people don't want anything to do with you. At this point, it doesn't mean that you are broken or that you're a bad person or you're unlovable. It just means that some people are not into you because they're not into your face, they're not into who you are. That is also okay. Don't take rejections personally. As a man, it's a very important advice to receive. Rejection is part of life. You must be rejected if you want greatness, even in love. Again, as I told you guys, I've been rejected a ton because I was a complete spaz when I was a young man. It was extremely tough. And I remember my first rejection. I was depressed for like two weeks, but it gets better. And you get to a point where rejections don't do anything to you anymore. Will you get to that point of coarseness? I don't know, but I know that you can work towards it. 
So try to make a conscious effort to actually get to that point. And also don't project the fear of rejection onto others. It's something that I see happen many times with people like you, where you've been rejected once and therefore the next time you enter the relationship with someone new, you enter with a fear of abandonment and therefore every time they do something or you get the sense that they don't like you anymore, you panic and you take everything out on them. Even though nothing could have happened, you are actually the one doing that. You sabotage the relationship. So don't even ask yourself if the feelings are reciprocated. Give the time to the person to be upfront about their feelings without, again, projecting your own feelings onto them. And the last question for the democracy section for today is by Snowy. I called you Snowy because you called yourself Skzni, like there was an X instead of the O, and I can't pronounce that, so I just renamed you. You said in the past that every guy should learn the language of women during your school college years in order to be able to communicate with them. I've missed the boat on this. I'm 21 and don't yet speak the female dialect. How does one start to learn and how does it differ from the male dialect? So, as a guy, as you talk to women, you will understand that there are two modes of communication. There are basic, there's basic language where men and women speak the same way with a, a few differences here and there in the type of verbs that we use and the syntax we use. And then there is the underlying language, which is entirely different. It's, in a sense, the unconscious language. It's what's underneath the words that you use. If you actually listen intently to women, you will come to understand that most of the communication, the female communication, occurs there. It occurs in the unconscious. Men are the opposite. Our conscious communication is where everything occurs. We tend to be more straightforward. We tend to be more upfront about what we want. I have started to notice that it's not the case with emotions. Men to be more guarded with our emotions and we tend to also restrain our emotions more because it is in a sense a part of masculinity to have self-restraint. I have come to believe that it can sometimes go too far to the point where you are not in touch with your own emotions, you are not in touch with your own heart. And that is, of course, a problem, but it's something that we're going to discuss later. I'm starting to revisit stoicism and I'm going to offer some of my thoughts later on. So for you in this situation, you don't speak the language of women, you don't understand when they talk, and therefore you have a very tough time actually connecting with them. You are 21, is it too late? No, it's never too late. I'm going to be honest with you, when I was growing up in college, in high school, I never spoke to women, and when I did, I spoke to them on the same level as I spoke to men. It's also the reason why I missed a gazillion relationships. I learned afterwards that three or four girls in my classroom in high school wanted to date me, and that they were pretty obvious about it. And until I started to learn how women communicate, I couldn't really understand that. But now I sit back and I look back at my memories and I think, dude, how could you not see it? Of course she was into you. But now, of course, it is too late. Therefore, it's always best to develop that at a young age. The issue is that you're not going to take a nine-year-old and say, hey, pay attention to girls when they speak. Because girls at this age are boring. They start becoming interesting when you're 15 or 16 and puberty starts coming into play. But at this point, you don't want to hear them talk. You just want to bang them. You want to kiss them. You want to make out. So it's usually something that if it occurs in your 20s is okay. Because you're also going to be able to listen to women who are more balanced as well. They are past their puberty as well. So you're not too late. That is great news. The way you're going to do it is very simple. You're going to listen, you're going to perk up those ears because women are extremely, extremely prone to oversharing. If you allow a woman to speak, she will speak until the cows come home. And that is great because it means you can just sit back and listen. Try to listen to what she says, not the words. The words might not be super interesting. Look at the emotions underneath. What is she trying to convey? If you have a girl, if you have a girlfriend, something that you will quickly notice is that women have a ritual. They like to share their days with you. Do they share the menial task with you? Does that really matter? No. They want you to go through all of the emotions they went through throughout the day. This is what you have to pay attention to, because this is the dialect of women. And the good thing as well is that you will come to understand that the more time you spend listening to women and their emotions, the more in touch with your own emotions you are going to become. It's a long process, yes. But if you are someone who wants to get in a committed relationship with a, with a woman, you better start to understand their language as soon as possible because you will spend the rest of your life speaking it. So try it out. Open yourself to the possibility. Do it with any girl that is in your vicinity. Do it with your mom. Do it with your sisters. Do it with the people in your classroom. Anytime you get the chance, 
for the most part, you will come to understand and you will come to realize that you can actually come up to women and let them talk to you. What women don't like is when you approach them and you babble in their ears trying to pick them up as quickly as possible. Instead, a man that takes a step back and is willing to listen, that is something that is going to be very well received. It might not necessarily score you women, but it will score you the attention of women and time spent with them. And this is how you become fluent in the female dialect. And then the next step is to actually speak it. It's not enough to understand it. Speaking it is extremely difficult for a man because to us it makes absolutely no sense. But it's also a game you're going to have to enter if you have a girl. You'll notice that if your girl comes to you with problems and things she wants to discuss, she does not want a solution. A solution is male dialect. What she wants is understanding. She wants you to understand her feeling, where she's coming from, trying to see a different angle, saying stuff like, I understand, I'm sorry, this sounds hard. All of this as a guy sounds completely useless, and it is, but it's only useless in the tangible world of actions. In the world of emotions, it is extremely important. Once you start to speak that female dialect, everything is going to come into play. And now we're going to start the tyranny part of this Q&A section. All of the questions that I think are very interesting, but I didn't get many votes. The first one is by Le Oncleur. I often fall really hard, really fast when I enter a relationship. This has led to me scaring away partners, had me fall for the wrong person. Any advice? So this is a continuation to the previous question, but this time we're going to go to the heart of the question, your identity. The issue for people who fall really fast is that for the most part, you are like this because you don't think that you're worth anything. And therefore, the second you secure someone, you immediately jump onto them because you believe that they are your savior. You believe that they are the person that is personally going to fix you, but more importantly, you don't think that you can get anyone else. And paradoxically, it's also the reason why you end up with a string of relationships. I have many friends who are like this. There are guys who simply cannot exist by themselves. They constantly need to be in a relationship. They need to belong to someone. And that is the sign of people, men, that don't like solitude. They don't like to be alone. And this fear of being alone is extremely common, both men and women. But the issue is that in men it's much more damaging because you must spend time alone as a man. Women are much more community oriented. They're always surrounded by people. It's not, it's not a trait that they absolutely have to develop, but you do. The problem is that you don't allow yourself to do that. The second you, f you are alone or you feel solitude, you jump into the arms of the next person you can find. And sadly, this prevents you from getting into healthy relationships because the attitude that you enter the relationship with is, I don't want to be alone. Therefore, eventually, you end up alone because you are insecure, you are desperate, so you push people away. This means that you're going to have to accept to spend some time by yourself. These strings of relationships need to stop at some point to give yourself the time to recenter on yourself. It's something that you've noticed as well. You fall for people really hard. What does that mean? You become hyper-invested in their life. You learn everything about them. And the time that you spend learning about them, you don't spend learning about yourself. This is why you end up in these situations. If you were more in tune with who you are, you would be able to enter healthy relationships. It's going to take cutting the code at some point to be able to enter into that mode. Because now you scare away people, you scare away good people, but more importantly, you end up with the wrong person times and times again. Why? You don't know who you are. How are you supposed to find someone that can complete what you are if you don't know what you are, if you have nothing to offer? Most of the time, it also means that the person in the relationship has to do everything in terms of identity because your own is so fragile. Women don't like doing that. Women don't want to have to furnish 100% of the effort in terms of carrying the relationship. They don't want you to just jump onto them so that they can take you somewhere. It doesn't work like that. If anything, they want to be carried. But I also want to point out the fact that this is damaging for you as well because since you have low confidence, you're constantly being, in a sense, captured by people who might have bad intentions. And since you don't have any self-worth, you don't have any ability to protect yourself. Something very important as a guy to develop is that confidence. You want to be confident in what you bring into the relationship. I can tell you one thing. 
For me, I know my worth, I know my value, and I know what I bring to the table. I know that I'm attractive, I know I'm intelligent, I have a good job, I'm stable, I'm nice, etc., etc. All of these things are not arrogance, it's confidence, and it's absolutely necessary. If you go around everywhere saying, I am a part of flaming garbage, guess what? You're going to attract people who like parts of flaming garbage, aka not good women. You might even end up with people who have some ill intentions towards you because they understand it's very easy to manipulate people with low confidence. So this is my advice. Take, take time away from relationships. Build yourself up. Find who you are. Find your worth. And once that is found, you're going to be able to re-enter the dating pool with a renewed confidence that is going to allow you to be much more chill and take your own, take your own time. I think that this is a solution that is easily, easily applicable. You can't do it right now because you, you're too stressed out. The reason why you end up falling really hard really fast in a relationship is because you're afraid the other person is going to leave. And this is something that rejection does to people as well is that you end up with an aban abandonment issue and that sabotages the future relationships that you enter with that new added baggage to the entire thing. So take a step back, lower the pace, okay? Take your time. Worst case scenario, everything that happens in the relationship is just going to occur, but a tiny bit slow. Whereas in the past, you just set up the entire thing in flame because you tried to rush. So no more rush a slow pace, be confident in what you bring to the table and see where it gets you. I think that you also have preconceived notions when you enter relationships. You want it to become super serious. You have all of these big ideas. Stop with that. All of that is just poisoning what the relationship could become in the future. Let the relationship be what it is. Let the people that you're going to enter the relationship with surprise you with who they are. Don't project how you feel upon them and you will find that your problems are mostly going to disappear. Next question by Nikolai. You said that men end up in the friend zone because they don't make their intentions known while the relationship is still ambiguous. There is a girl I have been friends with for four years and my feelings for her are definitely romantic. I want to confess, but I think I will be rejected. Is this worth pursuing and how to avoid this situation in the future? My attachment to her cripples my ability to develop feelings for other women. So the friend zone is a contentious topic because many call it sexist. I don't think it's sexist. It's only normal. A woman is going to have a ton of men that, is, that are going to orbit her because she is going to have her pick of the leader. It's normal. It's not something that you can blame women for. But in the process, she can't date all of the guys. So she's going to friend zone most of them, keep, it, keep them as friends so that she can transform them into potential romantic partners if needed down the line. This means that every time you enter a relationship with a woman, you are either one of these orbiters, which could be just a friend, right? If you're fine with that, it's okay. Or you are a romantic partner. There is no in-between. There is only an in-between during the ambiguous period. It's what I spoke about when I discussed the friend zone. There is a time in any relationship between a man and a woman where the friendship evolves into an ambiguous window. And during that window, you fluctuate. You're in between friend and boyfriend. The girl is not so sure. Of course, this only occurs if she's attracted to you. But this does not mean that you're going to score her. That window is only open for a select amount of time. And when it closes, it's over. And it's over forever. Many men don't understand that. They don't understand how it's possible for a girl to like a guy and then to move on. Where did these emotions go? Well, they were available for a time. And now it's over. Now someone else, another guy, has the window open. And it's up to him to take the chance. Because keep in mind that women only open the window. They don't jump through it. That is the man's job. It is your job as a man to jump through that window. A girl will never do it. And the girl will also never tell you the window is open. What she will do instead is she is going to give you some signs. The signs that a woman gives a man when she is attracted range widely. But if we go back to the female dialect, it's rarely verbal. Most of the time, it's the, in the gesture, it's in the body language. Something that I can tell you, for example, is the way a woman touches you tells a lot about her level of attraction towards you. Example, if a girl touches your chest, that is a sign. If a girl touches your arm, that is a sign. Why? It's her way to tell you, hey, 
Right now, I'm touching you intimately, intimately, because no one in your life touches you like this. It's only when you have sex or when you're cuddling someone or making out with someone. Would you like for it to happen? Would you like it to go the other step? She will never say these words, but this is what this means. Every single girl that has ever touched me in this fashion, and they always do it, wanted something more and she got something more. They became my girlfriends if I was interested. This is the female dialect. Many men are completely oblivious to that. I know I was oblivious as well. I remember going through high school and finding out after high school that many of the chicks in my class wanted to date me. But I was oblivious to it because I was not aware of what was going on. It's afterwards that I looked back and thought, oh my God, how, how couldn't I tell? Well, I couldn't tell because I did not know what the window was and I couldn't perceive when it was opened. So this is absolutely paramount for men to understand. A chick you like has started to befriend you. Keep an eye open for that window. That window will open at some point if she likes you. And when it's open, you have to go for it. This is this ambiguity period. And past that, you are screwed. For our good friend Nikolai here, he is absolutely screwed because it's been four years. So the window is closed and it's closed shut at this point. The issue is that he is not past his feelings for her. And these feelings devour, her, devour him. Of course, if you like a girl and you're constantly around her, it's a torture. There is some, some bittersweet, uh, bittersweet sense in it because you still get to spend time with her, to look at her. But we both know that this is not enough. This is not enough to actually satiate your hunger for love that you feel when you see that person. So it's absolutely necessary that you cut yourself from that sense of sick comfort that many men have that are stuck in the friend zone. Because at the end of the day, you are stuck because of you. This is important to say as well. The woman has you on the hook. And once you're hooked, you cannot actually go anywhere. You cannot go to see another woman. But you're the one who bites the bait. And you can spit the bait whenever you want in this scenario because the hook is not a real hook. You're still around that person because you still want to be around that person. However, you have started to understand that something must be done. And that something is to confess. At this point, you already have these feelings for her. You've been living with these feelings forever. You are essentially in a relationship with someone that doesn't know it. So you have to make it official and you have to make it official as soon as possible. Try to organize a date with her that she won't see as a date because she is completely oblivious to the scenario and then try and go and shoot your shot. Tell her, hey, we've been seeing each other for four years. You consider me a friend, but I see you as more than a friend. I have feelings for you. That's it. Don't need to beat around the bush. Just be straight to the point. Is she going to reject you? Yes, there is a very strong chance she's going to reject you because the window is closed. But that is a net positive. Even if you do not get the girl, it's a net positive because you're going to finally be free to pursue other women. As you've said, you're self-aware. You realize that in this scenario, because she's around, you cannot go anywhere else. Again, there's that hook. Your freedom of feelings is being restricted. She's vampirizing all of your attraction. So. If she is not going to transform it into someone that is going to reciprocate that attraction, she must be let go. And the only person that can let go is you. She won't let go. She will try to maintain you as a friend because at the end of the day, you're still a friend. You're someone that she likes, but it's not enough for you. So you must keep, you must completely cut contact. That is very important. It's hard to do, but it's absolutely necessary because what could happen in this scenario is that it could reopen the window. Because now you have planted the thought in her mind that you could be a potential partner, something that she might have forgotten. Keep in mind that when a girl spends enough time with a guy, the thought that the guy has a penis disappears. You become a Barbie doll, you become a Ken doll. Now your penis, your penis, penis, it's so strange to pronounce for a French speaker, is slowly starting to actually research. It's making a reappearance. And it might mean that down the line, she's going to try to recontact you, but this time, on a different basis to see if maybe a relationship is possible. So if you truly like that girl, don't try to preserve your friendship for her. This means nothing. Go for it. Shoot your shot. And you know that whatever happens is going to be for the best. And as for people who wonder, like Nikolai, how to avoid that type of situation in the future, it's very simple. Be on the lookout for the window. We have discussed that before. Men and women relationship past a certain point is mostly going to be centered around attraction and games of desires. If you know how to play the game and you know the rules of the game, 
once the party starts, you're going to be able to move and you're going to be able to actually potentially win the game at the end. So you have to be aware. You have to understand what is going on. Women always know what's going on, but they just never speak about it. They never let you know when the game has started. You have to be on your best behavior at all times and understand when it is time to actually jump. Just don't dilute yourself into thinking that just hanging around the woman at some point is going to score you a relationship because there are dozens of men that are just hobbling that woman all the time and they're never going to get a relationship ever. Next question is by Eamon who asks, I have been told by women that I am intimidating, six feet two and jacked, but not creepy. How to be less scary? Well, my friend, you are in luck because one, you possess characteristics that women find attractive, height and size. And on top of that, you already have women who are telling you that. When a girl comes up to you and says, hey, I find you intimidating, what does that mean? It means that she's flirting with you. A girl never goes up to a guy she actually finds legitimately scary and says, hi, I'm scared of you. Women stay away from these types of men, the creepy types. What these chicks are doing is they're trying to pay you a hidden compliment and they're trying to let you know, hey, I find you intriguing. You scare me, but it's, it's the good type of scare. It is something that I can get into. So it's a good thing. These chicks are already letting you know that they like you in a sense. So you don't want to be less scary. That is the thing, because that scariness that you have attracts them since they perceive as all good women do instinctively that they can turn that intimidation factor into a net benefit for them. If they can become your girlfriend, they can make sure that this scare that you bring to the wood can be used to protect them. So don't try to correct that. Don't try to smile, don't try to correct your behavior. You have already something that is very valuable that a lot of men never get. A lot of men are too short or they have a baby face. They never get to have that vibe and that aura that is very attractive to women. You are in a scenario, my friend, or the, the next thing you have to do is bag these women. Now, understand that they are still, in a sense, conveying that there is a level of fear. But they are also openly telling you that. What does it mean? They want you to prove that you are not dangerous to them. And what is this? Well, it's a simple conversation. They already started it. This is the toughest part. Establishing a conversation with a woman you don't know is the toughest part. And they openly start it. Continue. Make jokes. Try to make yourself appear less intimidating in her eyes by making known the fact that you might be a nice guy. You might be funny. You might, you might be warm inside. These are all of the things that are still going to keep you in the eye of the woman as a potential threat factor. But she also will come to understand that you're not a threat to her. And now it is the best of both foods. You are a potential protector and therefore you are someone that is tough in the outside and is soft in the inside. Something that women tend to like a lot. You hear that a ton. Men want, uh, I think it's something that they say in English, men want a slut in the sheets and a lady in the streets. And for women, what they want is they want a beast in the streets and they want a teddy bear in the house or in the sheets. They want someone that is going to offer that rough exterior to every opponent, aka the people around, the people opposed, but inside for the family, the core family, the children, you are going to be someone who is going to be very soft and very tender. Never get rid of that coarse exterior because it's what's going to allow you to show this soft interior to women. It's, what, it's the first initial draw. It's very tough to draw women with your interior. So be happy that you have the exterior. Next question by Stathis. You've mentioned that women are attracted to men they fear. Could you elaborate? What role does this play before the relationship starts? So this could easily be misinterpreted. I'm not saying that a girl is going to be attracted to a guy because he's going to beat her up. If anything, it's the complete opposite. Fear functions on two modes. If anything, we could even rename it. We could rename fear with the unknown. The unknown is a situation that you're not in control in. For women, that's most every time. Every time they're in a situation, they're not in control because they're small and they're physically weak. With that also comes the fact that they tend to be less confident. All of which are not necessarily bad things for women. They don't necessarily need these traits. What they need instead is a fourth instinct to protect them from this lack of power. And what is that? Fear. There's a book that I particularly love called The Gift of Fear, and it pretty much 
tells women that the instinct that they have in life, that primal fear that they have developed throughout thousands of years, is their best friend, and it absolutely is. And when it comes to selecting a man, it is also true. You must always keep fear in mind. We saw that with our friend Eamon. The girls saw a guy that was invoking some fear in them, but they calculated in their head that it could turn into a net positive. It's always something that is going to occur in relationships. You will not necessarily get a girl because you make her fear you, but you will get, you, you will get her attention, and that is already one thing. I'm not saying, of course, to act like a psychopath. This is not that type of fear we're talking about. Again, fear in this scenario is uncertainty. And that fear is also a metric that is very important in the preservation of the relationship. Because if you're a woman and you enter a, a relationship or a, a union with a man, you're with someone that can kill you at any point. Meaning that physically speaking, he can dominate you at any turn. So this fear that you have is important. If there is no fear, and you can say for certain that the guy is trustworthy, then that is still an application of fear. So what fear was I talking about when I said that women are attracted to the men they fear? Well, in this case, fear can be understood by respect, because respect is fear. Why do you respect someone? It's because if you don't respect them, there might be consequences. Maybe consequences to your own ego, the fact you're going to disappoint yourself. But these are still consequences. That's why I told you that being strict in a relationship with a woman is extremely important. These are the consequences I spoke to you about. It's also the fear. The woman needs to know that if she doesn't behave properly according to your boundaries, you have the potential to leave. If she hurts your feelings, you have the potential to hurt her feelings back. Of course, we never want to get to the point where it becomes physical. You never want to hurt your woman physically. It's something that must absolutely be avoided. But that is also a mode of fear. Because for a girl, as I said, it's important to never get to a point where her man actually hurts her physically because it could spell her doom. The issue is that many women have lost sight of that. Sometimes I hear some women speak to their men and I'm like, dude, either the guy is going to be completely depressed and you're going to end up with half a man or one day he's going to snap and he's going to break your neck. This is not good. This is what happens when women lose sight of fear. You always want to maintain some semblance of fear, aka respect, in a relationship between the man and a woman. I have come to believe that this is what makes the most stable relationships. And therefore, women are going to be more attracted to men that they fear, because this is going to usually mean that the relationship can go somewhere, because there is already a baseline of respect present. A woman that doesn't respect you cannot love you. It is directly connected in their brain. And a woman that cannot fear you on some level cannot respect you. I know that it's not uh, super palatable nowadays because, of course, we would prefer to be in a relationship when no such feeling is present. I'm not saying that your girl needs to cower in fear every time you enter the room. It's absolutely not that. But she needs to be aware that all of the protection that you give her is protection because she behaves properly. That protection can be taken away or redirected towards her in terms of aggression if something transgressive happens. And this also protects the relationship to go astray because, keep in mind that, not only women, women are not the only ones that are victims of violence in relationships. Men also are. And actually a lot of men end up being beaten up by their girlfriends. Why is that? It's because the girl has no fear for the man. And this actually leads to women being killed. Because at some point, as I said, the guy snaps. So fear is an absolutely central part of this entire thing. And as for the role that it plays before the relationship starts, women are going to be attracted to you, as I said, because you are a potential threat. But a potential threat could turn out to be a bounty. It could turn out to be something valuable. The important part is that you make the woman question Question your motives, question where you're going to go. It's why I said that maintaining a portion of mystery to your being, aka a portion of fear, is also very important. If a woman can read you like an open book, she won't want to be with you, she's already read the book. You must be entirely and constantly rediscoverable. Next question by Astroid99. How do you feel about women in a relationship wearing highly revealing clothes? So this is a scenario where boundaries come into play again. 
If your girl wears something that you don't like because it's too revealing, you must have the ability to come to her and express these things. But you cannot do it straightforward. You cannot do it like a man would. You can say, hey, don't dress like this, you're dressed like a slut. Because you are sure to invite an opposite reaction. See, she's immediately going to be antagonistic. So what do we do instead? Well, we're going to speak the language of women. What do you say instead? Hey, when you dress like this, it's making me feel insecure because it feels like you're trying to attract the, attack, the, you're, you're trying to attract the attention of other men. Of course, this makes you vulnerable in the moment, and maybe you don't want to be vulnerable, but it's the only way to get through to a woman, because if you don't, she's going to think you're trying to control her. Whereas, if she can start to get the sense that where the, where the entire thing comes from is more from a place of concern, then it's much easier for her to digest and to be receptive to your argument. You can also reshape the argument to say, hey, when you go out wearing clothes like this, you attract the attention of other men, some of which could be potentially dangerous. And when I'm not around to protect you, it makes me feel uncomfortable. Now you went in her head from being someone who is controlling to someone who is protected. Women don't like being controlled. Women like being protected. So it's going to be positive instead of negative, And it allows you to actually discuss the things with a clear mind and a, and a calm mind, which is much more important. You don't want it to degenerate into a feminist argument about my body, my choice. If we go back to what I said previously, it's the same argument as with the face tattoo. Yes, it's her body, she gets to wear what she wants, but a relationship is two people who are going to respect each other's boundaries for the perennity of said relationship. You can tell her, hey, I love your body, I think that you're the most gorgeous woman on earth, and I want this to be reserved to me. I want to be the only one that gets to see your cleavage. I want to be the only one that gets to see your ass or your thighs. This is valuable for women. Women like to be desired. They like to hear that, you want to keep that to yourself. If you get an adverse reaction, understand that you might be with a girl that likes the attention of other guys, and this gives you a valuable insight into who she is. What is she going to do with that attention? Is she just going to rejoice in it or is she going to actually act on it at some point? Express those things to her. Maybe you're faced with someone who has never had a guy who had the ability to articulate that to that emotional level and it might make her realize something. It's absolutely possible that a girl just wears slutty because it's what every woman does and because she gets cheap attention from it, so she, she just went for it. But now she has someone who gives her quality attention, aka you. And you can say, and it's that fear and those boundaries I was talking about, that for example, if she continues, you might end the relationship because you don't want to be with someone who doesn't respect your preferences, which means she's going to lose your attention and she's going to have to adapt around it, which means that she might stop wearing such clothes. And then you have to also question your motives, because it's important to understand where you come from, right? To be in touch with your emotions. Why do you feel bad when your woman was revealing clothes? At the end of the day, isn't she yours? You're the one who gets to have her. So why is another man seeing that beauty a problem for you? I'm not saying that it's something bad with you. It's an instinct that many men have. We want to protect the women. Women are treasures that we want to keep for ourselves. We don't want other men to have access to it, even just visually. But if you can understand where you come from, you can articulate that to her and it's going to make more sense. Is she going to understand? Not necessarily, she's a woman. You're speaking the emotional language of men here because you could go out wearing a thong and she wouldn't give a fuck. I go outside shirtless all the time, my wife doesn't care, even if other women look. Why? Men and women are not the same. She knows that I'm not going to make anything of that attention and that I'm not actually enjoying that attention. I'm shirtless because I like being shirtless. For women, it's not the same. Attention is very, very attractive and very addictive to them for obvious reasons. So be upfront, be open, and if she refuses to see the way you do, maybe it means that you are simply not compatible with her. And the last question is by someone who I believe to have a very strong connection with our emotions and who is very honest with themselves, but who is not able to act upon these emotions. The question is by Knife of Bud. As soon as I have the girl, I lose interest. Others become more enticing and I resent her. I have cheated on and hurt kind-hearted girls because the relationship is never more gratifying than the chase. I don't think it's honeymoon fever. Things just become dull the second I secure the girl. 
Is intimacy self-sabotage? Is it intimacy self-sabotage? Am I just an asshole trying to justify getting his rocks off? I want to learn how to stop. So first off, I commend you for being so honest with yourself. But now you have to move to the next step. It's the two things that every man needs to be able to do. You need to be emotionally in tune with yourself. And once you know where you stand, you need to take action. It's the action that must be taken. It's the same with the, the friend zone. You know that you like a girl. Okay, you're open to that. You have accepted this. Next step is you jump through the window. You take the action. In this scenario, what you know is that you cheat on women. Every time you get a girl, you lose interest the second you secure her. That is the, the base state of what is happening. What needs to happen next is the action. What are we going to do about it? Many men know what their flow is and they just end up never touching it. They almost even start to sense a sick, wicked sense of gratification from still indulging in those sins, in those vices. Never let yourself get to that point. It's how you become a complete degenerate. The fact that you still feel some sense of disgust towards what you did to these poor girls is a good thing because you did do a number on them. Now we have to identify why. I think that the why is fairly obvious, you know, also why. It's because the thrill of the chase is much more gratifying than the relationship itself. That is something that is a constant throughout every single male. I think we always like chasing the prey more than capturing the prey per se. It's just... The feeling that you get when you flirt with a girl, even before there has been any kisses and there is this sexual tension and you know all of the potential things that are going to happen in the future, this is, this is crack cocaine to the male brain. It's like a tension for women. It's what we want more than anything because you are proving to yourself your ability to seduce a woman and to get, to get her for you. And after that, what happens, happens, right? The, the, the actual sexual act, the, the make-out session, all of that happens afterwards. But as, you, as you've noticed, once you get the result of all of this, which is a serious relationship with someone, you're bored. Why? Because it can never compete with how intense the feelings of the thrill were. And that is a flaw that every single man has. It's also, and I'm opening a parenthesis here, why if you are a man in a happy, committed relationship, you have to take care of this, of this portion of your life and of your male brain, that thrill that you're so addicted to. Because if you don't, you're going to end up cheating on your wife or girlfriend. I've seen that times and times again. I've seen that with guys who end up flirting with a girl and they think, oh, I'm in control, I can stop it at any point. Then things get tense and heated and the kiss occurs. And after the kiss, the sex, and after the sex, of course, the cheating. It's too late at this point. And the sensation you get, and I'm sure that our friend Knife of Butter can relate, when you're done fucking and all of these hormones go down and you start to see the reality, that feeling in your chest cannot be described. It's awful. You feel terrible about yourself and what you've just done. The issue is that all of this occurred because you allowed the thrill of the chase to let you start flirting with a girl. Never even get to that point. Because if you were too weak to prevent the flirting from occurring, how exactly are you going to stop the sex from occurring? At this point, the, the, the male libido is like a steamboat. Once it gets going, it gets going. It cannot be stopped. So you have to prevent it from starting in the first place. And how you, do you do it? You recognize this weakness of men and you don't even go there. That is the first step. But then how do we deal with the desire of the thrill? Because even if you never cheat again, you'll still want to cheat. And this is still a painful sensation to experience as a man. Especially since fixing that... That, that necessity and desire to flirt and have sex with other women will not fix the fact that you're not happy whenever you are in a stable relationship. You're still going to find them dull, to find them boring. And that is, as someone like you who apparently wants that to stop and wants a committed relationship, something that must be fixed. So how do we fix that? Well, you say here that you believe it could be something deeper, something in the unconscious. You don't think it's honeymoon fever, you think that maybe it's intimacy, self-sabotage. All of that is going to be self-work you are going to have to do. I don't know enough about you to diagnose you with anything serious. What I can offer you is some potential pathways, some potential things to consider. In this scenario here, you, have, you struggle to maintain long-term relationships. And it's because the relationships become boring. Is it maybe because the way you select women means that you end up with people who are poor matches for you. 
You have said it. You are the type to be extremely attracted by the thrill. Every single girl that ended up being dull was the most important thing in your life at some point. When you were starting to flirt with them, she was your everything. She went from your everything to your nothing. Why? Because she was never your everything in the first place. You let the rose-tainted glasses of libido trick you into thinking that this girl is important. She's not that important. So maybe what needs to occur is not necessarily working on the thrill, but working on the type of women that the thrill selects for you. Maybe if you have a more thorough selection process, you will do better. Notice that you have the same problems as our friend Le Oncleur. Le Oncleur, we, who was also struggling because he ended up with partners that were not good for him. Why? It all starts at the selection. And the selection has a ton to do with who you are. You tend to select poorly, uh, poorly crafted or, or, or poorly manufactured partners because you yourself consider that you are poorly manufactured as well. You don't see your own worth. And therefore, you have to start to get within yourself and try to understand why you constantly sabotage those relationships. Because it could very well be that you're just punishing yourself as well. You're punishing yourself for your inability to love. And this is what is keeping you in this endless track where you can never have a stable relationship. For people like you, I always have the same message. Try to spend some time by yourself. Time you spend with other women and other people is time where all of your attention is directed towards them. And at some point for you, you lose interest and you redirect this attention towards someone else. But do you ever redirect it towards you? This is, I think, what would allow you to fix yourself, to get your demons under control. And maybe to meet a woman that you won't want to hurt, but most importantly, that you won't have to hurt because she will maintain the thrill going. I guarantee you that you're not broken. Many men think that they're broken, that they'll never know love. I was exactly like this. In my early 20s, I told myself that it was impossible for me to know love. I was just like you. I sampled girls. I fucked them once and then I left them never to see them again. I broke many hearts and I'm deeply ashamed of it. But I eventually took some time for myself and I was lucky enough to meet a woman who, beyond the thrill, had something to offer me. It might very well be that as nice as these, these girls are, they have nothing to offer you and this is why it is dull. You purposely see relationships as something that needs to occur on a sexual level. One day you will understand that the emotional level is more important than that. But you can never tap into the emotional level if there is no emotional connection. I would also tell you, and I know it's hard, to delay the sexual act. Try to spend some time knowing the girl. Try to push away the thrill and see what happens. Is it going to be boring? Maybe. But at some point, you know that the relationship becomes boring anyways. It might be that accepting to take things slow at the start is going to make it so that the fire lasts a long time. And this is what is going to conclude my advice for you. And also this first dating Q&A. So keep in mind that uh, I have a ton of material now from the community page, so you can still keep posting questions, but I should be able to make another episode of this series in a month. And as a small detail that I forgot to add, if you are someone who wants to have their question answered but don't want their name to be pronounced, let me know and I will keep you anonymous. For the rest, I'm always going to be saying exactly who asked the question. And I'm going to leave you with that for tonight. Thank you for watching. Have a good night.